Russian counterattack in Kursk region has been stopped, Alexei Mitrushkivsky, a spokesman from Ukraine's military administration set up in the area said on Wednesday. They tried to attack from the flanks, but they were stopped there, Dmitrushkivsky said, adding that the situation was stabilized and today everything is under control, they are not successful. However, Dmitrushkivsky admitted some minor success by Moscow. The Russians entered one of the settlements. They started fighting for another settlement, but that was it, the Ukrainian military official said. Dmitrushkivsky also claimed that Russian strikes on the area as it tries to re-seize the land have killed 23 civilians since the end of August, saying they are dying with the Ukrainian military. Furthermore, the official said that there were more than 500 Russian civilians in some settlements in Kursk region. Blasts rocked one of Russia's strategic bomber bases in the city of Engels in the Saratov region. Powerful explosions were heard in the area of the Engels Air Base, which houses Russian Tu-95 and Tu-160 strategic bombers, Ukraine's 24 Canal reported. Russia's Tu-95 and Tu-160 strategic bombers are capable of carrying out nuclear and conventional long-range strikes, and have repeatedly been used by Russia's military to launch missile attacks on Ukraine. Kiev has said that Russian military bases are legitimate targets in the conflict, and its forces regularly target them using long-range drones. Attacks on Russian soil are typically claimed by the Security Service of Ukraine and Ukraine's main intelligence directorate. Russian authorities haven't commented on the reported attack. According to Kiev Post, some Ukrainian millbloggers suggested the Tuesday attack was aimed at munitions recently delivered to the airfield for later launch at Ukraine. The usually reliable Kiev-based military observer Vertical, citing Ukrainian government sources, said unspecified observers monitoring the airbase had spotted signs of missiles being unloaded at Engels, too. The Ukraine volunteer-operated Ukraine frontline in X report said it was a batch of newly produced KH-101-55 SM cruise missiles delivered by an IL-76MD Russian Air Force cargo jet, and said fires observed at the airfield on Tuesday were of recently arrived cruise missiles, or aircraft, hit by one or more Ukrainian drones. Several Telegram channels and 24 Canal shared footage that purportedly shows the moment explosions were heard in the region. Explosions at the Engels airfield in the Saratov region, Andriy Tsaplienko, a Ukrainian journalist, said on his Telegram channel, sharing video footage, noting that Russia's military houses two 95 bombers at the air base. While it is not clear what caused the explosions, we will continue to follow, Tsaplienko wrote. Russian leader Vladimir Putin has issued a decree to increase the size of the Russian army, which will now number 2.389 million people. Of these, there will be 1.5 million military personnel, which means an increase in the number of Russian soldiers by 180,000. The document comes in force on December the 1st of this year. Consequently, Russia will suffer significant losses on the battlefield and it seems that the pace of recruitment for monetary incentives is failing to meet the Russian military leadership's demand for over 30,000 soldiers per month. Ukrainian military expert Sahi Zuguretz says that this shortfall has caused a sharp increase in compensation for contract soldiers. It is known that one-time payments for signing a contract have risen to nearly 1 million rubles, which is more than $10,000. In Moscow, even up to 2 million rubles. However, in any case, the rate of collecting dead souls in Russia still does not meet the needs. Now Russia has an extremely high number of casualties and this decree, we can assume, is an attempt 
to increase the number of contract soldiers. If we are talking about increasing the size of the Russian army, these actions will bring results only in the first half of 2025, because this decree will only increase conscription. In any case, Russia does not have time to quickly provide new personnel with equipment and commanders. Therefore, it is likely to rely on a gradual increase in numbers. Ukrainian military expert Alexander Kovalenko says that Putin's decree shows the depletion of equipment reserves and the awareness of the looming crisis in 2025, but such an approach can only accelerate the collapse of the Russian armed forces. Russia does not have and will not have tanks or other armored vehicles for such a number of people. Russia doesn't have nearly that many tanks, and the Soviet army didn't even have that many armored fighting vehicles. Today, the Russian army is already facing problems with equipment which is running out in warehouses, arsenals and storage centers where it has been stored since the Soviet era. That is, in the near future, Russia will be fighting in the full sense of the word with marching battalions, battalions consisting exclusively of infantry with a minimal mechanized component. He emphasized, in this regard, the Ukrainian armed forces must now prepare for the fact that the positions of the Ukrainian army will be stormed by numerous human resources which must be destroyed not selectively but en masse in order to save ammunition and reduce the effectiveness of the quantitative factor that is, cluster munitions and area effect weapons are one of the solutions to the emerging problem, he emphasizes. The same FPV drones from the precision strike category will increasingly have to become volume trickily detonating in the air over enemy groups, saturated with damaging elements distributed over an area. Putin's decree on increasing the army is a clear sign of the exhaustion of equipment reserves and the awareness of the impending crisis of 2025 associated with the compensation of mechanized losses. But with the right approach, the decision to fight with numbers will only accelerate the collapse of the Russian armed forces. The expert adds, 